I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. With the death of Queen Elizabeth and the coming coronation of King Charles III, people in Canada are asking, why do we pledge allegiance to the king to begin with? This is Can Explains Canada and the Monarchy. Okay, first, the short answer. We pledge allegiance to King Charles because Canada is what's called a constitutional monarchy. So, what is that? Well, the constitutional monarchy is our system of government where we have a head of state who's above party politics and is separate from the head of government who is the prime minister. So the head of state is the monarch. And the monarch right now is King Charles. Why might you ask, is King Charles from England Canada's head of state? At one point in history, the British Empire ruled a quarter of the world's land. That meant there were British colonies all over the world, and the king or queen reigns over them. Now, colonialism is its own complex topic, and we'll need another can explains to really dig into it. Back to Canada, the colony. We're not a colony anymore, so why is the king still our head of state? There's been a, a, a long transition uh, for Canada from being part of this British Empire to being part of a Commonwealth. Okay, Dr. Harris, let's pause right there. The Commonwealth? Well, the Commonwealth um, consists of countries that mostly once belonged to the British Empire and are now independent countries. Fifteen of these countries are Commonwealth realms, where the monarch is head of state, so these are fully independent countries. So King Charles is the head of state for these realms, but they run their own governments and make their own political decisions. Got it. But not every former colony wants the monarch to be their head of state, and some have walked away. One of the earliest examples is Ireland. They gained their independence in 1921, after 700 years of British rule. The most recent example is Barbados. Though already an independent country, their government voted to stop pledging allegiance to the queen, part ways with the monarchy, and become a republic. Why? Well, each country has its own reasons, but for Barbados... The colonization that happened there was quite brutal. Not many people know this, but actually in the Caribbean, um, they used to work slaves to death, actually, so they didn't actually replace them. And Jillian says that part of the reason for Barbados to remove the monarchy as their head of state was to... Try to recognize the history and become its own country that kind of steps away from that brutal legacy. And what happens after they remove the monarchy as their head of state? In Barbados' case, they replace the queen with a president. So, what do Canadians want? According to a poll done by Angus Reid, the majority of Canadians no longer want to be a constitutional monarchy, aka ditch the king as head of state. The same poll found that the majority of Canadians find the royal family less relevant than they used to be. One of the challenges is that in Canada, a lot of people don't think about the monarchy unless there's a big royal tour or a big royal event happening. But it's not just boredom or lack of awareness. Colonialism has left a bitter taste for some Canadians as well. Indigenous peoples in particular have a complex relationship with the Crown. Clearly the relationship between the Canada and the Crown and Indigenous peoples isn't working. It isn't a true nation-to-nation -nation agreement um, where everyone is mutually beneficial. So I think we have to think about when we're talking about abolishing um, the constitutional monarchy, really center Indigenous voices. But a lot of Canadians still want the King as our head of state. I think that the historical ties are of interest to uh, many Canadians. There's been personal admiration for Queen Elizabeth II, and there's the involvement of members of the royal family as honorary colonels-in-chief of Canadian military regiments or as patrons of Canadian charities. But what if we did want to cut ties with the royals? So in Canada, it would be a very complicated process and would require all 10 provinces uh, to agree. The future is unwritten, and there are a lot of unanswered questions. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Maybe we would be pledging allegiance to a flag instead of the king like in the US? Would we still have a governor general? If not, who would be in charge of our military? What would happen to all the treaties that were signed before Canada had a government? Would the royals still come to visit? But for now, we're going to keep doing what we are currently doing, and this guy will probably be in all of our money pretty soon. Want to know who we spoke to and where we got all of our research? We listed our key sources right here. 
That's it for Can Explains. For CBC Kids News, I'm Inara Aline.